In this Easy Ed video lecture, we will take a look at analysis of trusses and frames wherein we will learn about the special cases which can be used in the analysis of trusses. We will also learn about determinancy of trusses. Hey, it's time to concentrate now. We have previously learned about analysis of trusses by method of joints and method of sections. In analysis of trusses, we come across some special cases which if identified and used help us to find the solution easily and faster. These cases are explained as follows. If three members meet at a point among which two are collinear and there is no load at the joint, then the third member is a zero force member and the two collinear forces have the same magnitude and nature. For example, consider the joint O formed by three members OA, OB and OC. Members of OA and OB are collinear and there is no load at the joint. Then, by special case 1, we can conclude that force in member OC is 0 and force in member OA is equal to that in member OB. If four members meet at a point forming two pairs of collinear members and there is no load at the joint, then the forces in the collinear members have the same magnitude and nature. For example, consider the joint O formed by four members OA, OB, OC and OD. Members OA and OB are collinear and OC and OD are collinear. Also, there is no load at joint O. Hence, by special case 2, we can conclude force in member OA is equal to the force in member OB and force in member OC is equal to that in member OD. If two members meet at a joint and the joint is unsupported and unloaded, then both the members are zero force members. For example, the diagram shows a joint formed by two members OA and OB. Joint O is unsupported and also no load acts on it. Therefore, by special case 3, we can conclude that forces in both OA and OB are zero in magnitude. Thus, we have discussed about the three main cases important to analyze trusses. Now, we will learn about determinancy of trusses. A truss in which we can find the forces in all the members of the truss by applying the three conditions of equilibrium is known as statically determinate truss. In simple words, a truss which can be analyzed completely is called as a statically determinate truss. Such a truss is also called as a perfect truss. All the trusses that we have solved till now were statically determinate. For a truss to be statically determinate, the following condition must be followed. This equation gives us a relation between the number of members, joints and support reactions. A truss in which we cannot find the forces in all the members of the truss by applying the three condition of equilibrium is known as a statically indeterminate truss. In simple words, a truss which cannot be analyzed completely is called as a statically indeterminate truss. They are also called as imperfect truss and do not satisfy the equation. Statically, indeterminate trusses are of two types. Redundant or over-rigid truss where the number of members is more and deficient truss where the number of members is less. Hey, it's time to concentrate now. Consider the rectangular truss shown alongside. It has four members, four joints and three support reactions. Using the relation explained previously, we see that it is a deficient truss. Such trusses cannot retain their shape when loaded. Now, we will add another member between any two of the existing joints. Then, we have five members, four joints and three support reactions. Using the relation, we check that it is a statically determinate truss. Such trusses resist the loads without undergoing appreciable deformation in shape. Now, we will add another member between any two of the existing joints. Then, we have six members, four joints and three support reactions. Using the relation, we find that it is an over-rigid truss. Thus, it is a statically indeterminate truss. Hence, we cannot analyze all the members of the truss 
as we will be unable to find all the member forces. This is undesirable in analysis of trusses as each extra member adds one degree of indeterminacy. Thus we have learned how adding or removing one member can make a truss statically determinate or indeterminate. The following problems will be helpful to understand the concept behind analysis of a truss using the special cases explained above and also to determine whether the truss is perfect or imperfect. Consider the truss shown. Find forces in as many members as possible by inspection. In this case, we will use the special cases to determine as many member forces as possible. Let us now consider joint I. It consists of only two members and an external force which is collinear to one of the members. Hence, we can apply case 1 to this joint. Thus, we identify force in member HI as 5 kN and tensile in nature. Also, force in member DI is equal to 0. Similarly, we can now apply special case 1 to joint D as member DI has no force and thus joint D has only 3 members. We can conclude that force in member CD is equal to 0. Also, forces in members DH and support reaction at D are equal. Let us now consider joint B. It consists of 3 members with 2 members being collinear and an external force which is collinear to the third member. Hence, we can apply case 2 to this joint. Thus, we identify force in member BF as 10 kN and tensile in nature. Also, force in member AB is equal to force in member BC. Let us now consider joint E. It consists of only two members with no external loading. Hence, we can apply case 3 to this joint. Thus, we conclude force in members AE and EF is equal to 0. Also, we can apply special case 1 to joint G. We thus conclude that force in member GC is equal to 0 and force in member GF is equal to force in member GH. Thus, we have identified as many member forces as possible by inspection. Let us consider this problem now. Consider the truss shown alongside. Check if the truss is perfect or imperfect. We will first check if the truss is perfect or imperfect. The truss has 10 members, 7 joints and 4 support reactions. Using the condition for statically determinant truss, we find that the truss is perfect. Let's have a quick review of what we have studied in this lecture. In analysis of trusses, we came across some special cases, which if identified and used, help us to find the solution easily and faster. If three members meet at a point, among which two are collinear, and there is no load at the joint, then the third member is a zero force member, and the two collinear forces have the same magnitude and nature. If four members meet at a point forming two pairs of collinear members, then there is no load at the joint. Then the forces in the collinear members have the same magnitude and nature. If two members meet at a joint and the joint is unsupported and unloaded, then both the members are zero force members. Then we learnt about determinancy of trusses. A truss which can be analyzed completely is called as a statically determinate truss. They are also called as perfect truss. For a truss to be statically determinate, the following condition must be followed. A truss which cannot be analyzed completely is called as a statically indeterminate truss. They are also known as imperfect truss and do not satisfy the above condition.